Now, one of the things that you're going to have to understand and know, which is critical, is after the limb bud forms, the most distal region of the limb bud, you get this slight protrusion, which is called the apical ectodermal ridge, or the AER, the apical ectodermal ridge. Let me see if I can show you a picture of it. Right there it is, right there. So when the limb bud forms, you actually get this tiny band of cells that forms in the most distal region of the limb bud. Now before this apical ectodermal ridge forms, if you kind of start destroying some of the tissue, the limb will actually regenerate. But once the AER forms, if you get rid of the AER, you don't get in the limb formation. The limb will not develop, okay? And so that's how critical the apical ectodermal ridge is. This is key to limb development, uh, specialization of cells or differentiation of cells, as well as maintaining of um, mitosis that's necessary for the outgrowth. This is where FGF8 expression is also maintained. As I mentioned, this is the ectoderm. So here, the apical ectodermal ridge is is pretty much the ectoderm. But if you remove the whole thing, then it's gone. I mean, it's just, you, you cannot form the limb. Even if you just take off this top layer and you get this limb bud forming right here, it, it will not progress. You will not get limb formation. So that's the signaling center. This is the one that is inducing the limb to not only grow outwards, but to also undergo differentiation, okay? Now this is mainly for proximal distal patterning. There is a different signaling center that we're going to talk about that is primarily for um, anterior posterior patterning. And there's a different region that is responsible for dorsal ventral patterning. So there's actually multiple signaling centers in the developing limb that are necessary for the proper development of this. So the most distal region of the developing limb bud ultimately forms this tiny band of cells called the apical ectodermal ridge where FGF8 is localized. The FGF8 keeps FGF10 stabilized underneath. One of the reasons why this is critical is the AER maintains cell proliferation in the developing limb. So you have to increase the number of cells as the limb is growing, otherwise you're not going to be able to develop the limb. One of the critical things about the AER is they've shown that it induces um, the cells as the limb grows out to keep growing, to keep undergoing mitosis, to keep going through the cell cycle. If you remove the AER, those cells will no longer proliferate. They will no longer continue through the cell cycle and continue to grow out. And that's one of the reasons why the AER is so critical. Now, this is what they've shown. They've actually can induce a third limb bud with FGF signaling. Now, what's interesting is when they do that, it's it's interesting that the tissue that normally wouldn't form a limb here, there's a barrier or there's a point at which TBX5 still can be expressed. Because what they show is that when they put it at a critical point right here in between the two limbs, then you get a limb which is half forelimb, half hind limb. It's really weird. So there's obviously some barrier right here where the cells are competent to be able to express TBX5 for forelimb formation, but due to the fact that you don't get FGF stabilized in this middle region right here, you typically don't get a limb in between there. Now, that's fascinating. They found some animals in nature, some frogs and other organisms in the jungle, that do have three sets of limbs because it's actually due to a parasite that kind of interrupts the formation of the, uh, the limb bud and actually causes it to diverge and, and then forms three limbs. It's really weird. Um, so, there are situations where three limbs can form, but it's an abnormality, it's not a, norm a normality. But that's what's fascinating, and that's what we want to figure out here, is what creates this barrier in which this is the kind of that forelimb, hindlimb uh, region where t uh, anything above here, or more um, caudal, is TBX5, and anything more rostral is TBX4. So we're still trying to figure out those mechanisms of what causes these cells to express TBX5 and these TBX4. So here's just an example. There's the, here's the, what the experiment that they did, where they had the third bud forming. Here's the limb forming, and half of it's a wing, and half of it's a leg. Um, so, yeah. All right. So back to the apical ectodermal ridge. Now this was um, this they did 
two different types of experiments. One where they induced the new formation of a whole limb bud. Another where they transplanted an AER, and you get the same effect. If you transplant the AER to another region, you will get the limb growing out from that region as well. That's how critical this is for a, a, a patterning. So let's look at the genes here. So the, the, the key here is that mesoderm coming from the forelimb has the potential to become uh, not only bone, but the humerus and the ulna and the radius, whereas mesoderm coming from the hind limbs only has the potential to become the femur and the tibia and the fibula, even if you have the same inductive signals, which you do, from the AER. So that's why this is not the AER in the forelimb versus the AER in the hind limb. They aren't any different in terms of their inductive signaling. What's different is the underlying mesoderm and the fate that they went through to get to that point, which restricts their ability to either become forelimb bones and muscle or hindlimb bones and muscle. So you can see how even early on, you get this restriction of FGF8. Remember, this is induced by the lateral plate mesoderm. So the underlying lateral plate mesoderm, FGF10, is localized to that region, and that's what induces the ectoderm here to start expressing FGF8, and that will form, uh, start the formation of the limb bud. Then after a little while, then you get the AER forming. So just because you see this right here doesn't necessarily mean that the AER is formed at that point, but it's, this is right about the junction which the AER is about to form. So they've done a number of experiments where um, they, oh, okay, so here they took off half of it, and sure enough, the limb, you get a little bit, you get the humerus, but it doesn't go beyond that. So here's where they've done a number of these different experiments. They put extra AER in, We'll see why this causes multiple digits to form here in a second. Um, here, where you take leg mesenchyme and you put it in where the wing forms, and that's where you get the leg forming. So that's where it illustrates that the, the AER is in what induces the, the forelimb or the hindlimb bone is the underlying fate of the um, uh, mesoderm cells that come from those particular regions. Um, let's see. Uh, Non-limb mesenchyme, this is what's interesting too, is it's not just the AER that is inducing this, but the, the cells that are part of the limb must be competent to be able to be induced. So here they're taking mesenchyme from, say, um, these regions where there is no limb bit forming, they put it under there, and no limb forms. So there really is reciprocal induction going on here. These cells, these mesoderm cells underneath the AER must be competent to receive the signal. Remember we talked about competence, the, the cell's you know, differentiated state, its ability to respond to an inductive signal. Um, and again, they've taken away the AER, but they replaced it with FGF, like FGF8, and the limb bud forms as normal. So that's one of the key factors in why the AER is so critical is the FGF signaling that, that is maintained in the ectoderm. That's really where, where it comes down to, is this is what creates that proximal distal axis and allows the limb to grow out. So with that, we don't, uh, there's two theories on how you get the stylopod, zygopod, and the autopod forming. Since it doesn't have to do with uh, um, inductive signals by the AER at different points, it comes down to the underlying mesenchyme or the mesoderm, uh, mesoderm mesenchyme, remember those are two different things, but you have mesoderm and they are mesenchyme cells underneath the developing limb. 